Now we turn to the terror in Brussels. We've just learned that one of the two suicide bombers was a suspected bomb maker in the attacks in Paris back in November. The Associated Press is also reporting that the Islamic State has dispatched hundreds of fighters trained to attack in Europe. At least 31 people are dead after the Brussels attacks yesterday. Nearly 300 are injured, some of whom still are in critical condition. An American couple that dropped off a relative at the airport right before the explosions is still unaccounted for. Investigators say they found 33 pounds of TATP explosives at the house where the suspects left from for the airport. The cab driver who drove the three suspects to the airport led authorities to that house. Tonight, we're talking to a local explosives expert who specializes in these kinds of bombs. Eyewitness News reporter Rosie Woods continues our in-depth coverage. I went over to URI to talk to an international TATP expert. She tells me that all the ingredients in TATP can be found at your local drugstore. On Wednesday, prosecutors investigating the Brussels attacks determined that 15 kilos of TATP explosives were found inside the home of the suspects. The same type of explosive that was used in the Paris attacks. Jimmy Oxley is a world-renowned expert on TATP working at URI. She's been studying the explosives since the 1990s and tells me it's a lot easier to make TATP explosives than most people think. Probably every housewife in this country has bought the two ingredients, the major ingredients, acetone for nail polish remover and hydrogen peroxide, which you might use in a cut or even a mouthwash. Oxley and her department work to make safer military explosives, but they're also working to prevent terrorists from making homemade explosives. If these chemicals were not available, uh, they couldn't make them, but they're available not for terrorists, they're available because we need them in modern society. So we're looking at ways to adulterate them so they can't be used for explosive. Number two, we're looking at ways to detect them. And number three, we're looking at ways of gently destroying them. Oxley also mentioned that there's other scientists at URI, they're working on a device that would be able to detect TATP if it's in an airport, something that could be used for security in the future. In the control room, Rosie Woods, Eyewitness News.